welcome back to Kids Zone at Home. I'm Darlene, and this is my friend Bethany. Hi. And we are very glad that you are here. I think Christmas is my favorite time of the year. I love the music and the lights and the trees and the treats and the presents. This year is so much fun. Do you have a favorite? Um, I like the Christmas cookies. <gasps> Christmas cookies. Hmm, we'll see how that works at game time. It's a great time to celebrate Christmas. But, but one of my favorite parts of Christmas is, hmm, have you guys got it figured out yet? Do you know what my favorite part of Christmas is? I think I can guess. <gasps> guess. Baby Jesus. <gasps> it is baby Jesus. We have been celebrating all month long. We have been celebrating that Jesus is God's greatest gift. And it's not just his greatest gift to me. It's his greatest gift to everyone. That's right. <gasps> we are so close to Christmas Day. We have five more sleeps. So this month, a kid's own at home, we have opened a Christmas bag to find a clue about the game that we have been playing. I don't know about you, but I'm ready. We're going to get our clue. Are you ready? I am ready. Okay, let's see what's in the bag. Da -da -da -da. Put your hands in there. <gasps> Ooh, Ooh, oven mitts. Oven mitts. Ooh, I hmm. like the look of this. You know, we need some Christmas baking. We found out that Bethany likes Christmas cookies. Maybe like these yummy Christmas cookies here. Do you think maybe that's what we're doing with those oven mitts? Yeah. No, we're not. I'm Aww. sorry. Maybe you can take some of these home. Or better yet, share them with the other leaders later on when you Ooh. see them. Maybe those detectives that keep running around here. Good Hang idea. On. I hear detectives like cookies. I know. You look kind of like that detective. What? What do you mean? I, I, I get that a lot. I look like everyone. Oh, all right. Well, you might notice that there's a whole bunch of gifts here on this table. There are a whole bunch yeah. of gifts. Inside what are we going to do? Inside these gifts, there are cards. Ooh. And on those cards are numbers. And you're going to try to get enough cards to get past the number 10. Oh. So that means she could have two fives. Or she could have four threes. She could have a five, and a three, and a three. Oh, I like math sometimes. Oh, oh, sorry, got off track. All right, back to the game. All right, so that sounds easy, right? Open up the gifts, find some numbers. Well, then, what are we doing with the oven mitts? Oh, I remember. You have to wear them. Oh, man, this is going to be hard. It's going to be a little hard. What hand are you best with? My right hand. Excellent. Put it behind your back. You can't use oh, it. Oh, no. All right. So with her left hand and an oven mitt, she's going to see if she can unwrap enough of these ba bags to get to the number 10. Do you think she can do it? <gasps> oh, they are certain you can do it. Oh, All right. awesome. Let's go. Okay. <gasps> I feel like this might get a little messy. Oh, when you open presents at Christmas, do you find it gets a little messy? Are you the type of person who opens it with every little piece of tape perfectly and fold up the paper? That's one of my kids. And then the other kid that I have, you know what? For him, uh -oh. it's just it. get in the bag, get in the box, and the paper goes flying everywhere, and there is paper all can't over <laughs> the actual living room. Oh, look, I got she a got a bug. I can't pick it up. You know what we learned about last month? We help one another out, don't Thank we? Thank you. So she's got a five. Is that close to ten? Hmm. I think it's pretty close. Oh, look. I she's... don't think that one even oh, has a card in it. Oh, they all have cards in it. I wonder what happened to her card. Who knows? All right, well, you better keep going. I think you're probably getting close to running out of time. Oh, oh Let's see. I oh, see something. she might have another card. <gasps> oh, uh, you know what? I just want to mention. It's a two. You... Oh, a two? Look, five and two. We're at... Seven! Seven! Yay! Just for the record, don't try to open your Christmas presents Christmas morning with oven mitts. Leave oh. the oven mitts in the another oven. Another two! Oh, another two! Oh, 
two! <gasps> okay, I just need one more. She only needs one more present. Let's cheer her on. Are you ready? Go, Bethany! Go, Bethany! Go, Bethany! You can do it! You can do it! Oh, oh I think oh, she's oh. done it! Three! Three! <gasps> Guess what, Bethany? What? You have 12! Yay! Awesome! Can we say thank you to Bethany for coming and playing our game? That was epic. You have been so good at playing all these reindeer games, because at Christmas we play reindeer games. All right, guess what, everyone? It's time for us to stand up and get ready to sing and worship God together. Thanks, Bethany. Bye. Bye. Friends, it's almost Christmas, and I can't believe it. We're just a few days away, so we are going to have a Christmas music sing-along. So let's jump up on our feet and celebrate big. fun. Jesus is the greatest gift that has ever been given. As we read in John 3 16, God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son so that anyone who believes in him will not die but will have eternal life. Oh, that's one of my favorite pieces of scripture. I really wonder what those detectives are going to discover about the case for Christmas. We are getting so close to Christmas, and I think those detectives are on the right track. I think they're going to figure out what we already know, and that's that Jesus is the reason. Should we keep watching and see what happens in the case for Christmas? I think so. I'm going to go have a seat. Join me in watching the rest of the play. See you soon. Kids on detectives, can I help you? No, none of the animals on the ark spoke. Well, yes, scripture does tell us that a donkey once spoke, but that didn't have anything to do with the ark or the manger where Jesus was born. Yeah, 
Yeah, the reference for the speaking donkey can be found in Numbers 22, verse 28 to 31. I know. Everyone thinks Numbers is a boring book in the Bible. You should look into that. Oh, you're very welcome. It's a very interesting account. Thanks so much for calling. Bye-bye. As usual, your reports on the first two clues were very well done. Should we do a recap as we move ahead in a case for Christmas? Well, for the first clue on prophets and promises related to Jesus' birth, we determined that we can have hope because God keeps his promises. Checking our investigation board, we considered prophets like Micah, uh, Isaiah, Malachi, Jeremiah, and even the promises God sent through Balaam and dug into those scriptures. And for the second clue of plans and angels related to the birth of Jesus, we determined that we can have joy because God has a plan for each of us. That's comforting and exciting. We looked at angel visits to John the Baptist's dad, Zechariah, and to Mary, and to Joseph too. We even marveled that John the Baptist, while still in his mother's womb, leapt for joy in the presence of Jesus. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think I covered the key points from clue two. I think two, you but, got yeah. it. Awesome. And you did. Excellent. The third clue, let's grab that here. Bethlehem and shepherds. Bethlehem shepherds. As you discussed in your first report, Bethlehem was identified by Micah as Jesus' birthplace 700 years before Jesus was born. It appears the client sees a really key link in this clue. We've got this. All Excellent. right, let's get to work. The shepherds came into the Christmas story after Jesus' birth. We should probably look again at the account of Jesus' birth before we go to get the shepherds. Agreed. Um, better grab the Bible. Okay, so from Luke 2, verses 1 to 7. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Syria. All people returned to their own ancestral homes to register for the census. And because Joseph was a descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, to whom he was engaged, who is now expecting a child. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to her firstborn son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no lodging available for them. And the angels make another appearance to the shepherds. Let's find that. Here it is. That night... There were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding the flocks of the sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified, but the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid. I bring you good news of great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David, and you will recognize him by the signs you will find a baby wrapped snugly in strips of cloth lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in heaven. Peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was a baby lying in the manger. After seeing them, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. 
the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. Hmm. Okay, so Bethlehem shepherds is the third clue. Hmm. We've got an average couple for the times when this happened. Mary and Joseph were average, although their lives suddenly became anything but average. That's true. They were both descended from different family lines of King David. And they traveled to Bethlehem as part of a government census, and Jesus was born there. Then the angel and angelic hosts appeared and said, I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. The Savior's the key. Great joy to all people. That's it. God loves us so much that he gave us a Savior. The angels wrapped that one up for us. Just like the perfect present Jesus is. I'll get the report started. And I'll get the investigation board pieces completed. From the Jesus Storybook Bible, pages 180 to 191. Sure enough, it was just as the angel had said. Nine months later, Mary was almost ready to have her baby. Now Mary and Joseph had to take a trip to Bethlehem, the town King David was from. But when they reached the little town, they found every room was full. Every bed was taken. Go away, the innkeepers told them. There isn't any place for you. Where would they stay? Soon, Mary's baby would come. They couldn't find anywhere except an old, tumble-down stable, so they stayed where the cows and the donkeys and the horses stayed. And there, in the stable, amongst the chickens and the donkeys and the cows, in the quiet of the night, God gave the world his wonderful gift. The baby that would change the world was born, his baby son. Mary and Joseph wrapped him up to keep him warm, they made a soft bed of straw and used animals' feeding trough as his cradle. And they gazed in wonder at God's great gift, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Mary and Joseph named him Jesus, Emmanuel, which means God has come to live with us. Because, of course, he had. The Light of the World, the Story of the Shepherds from Luke 2. That same night, in amongst the other stars, suddenly a bright new star appeared. Of all the stars in the dark vaulted heavens, this one shone clearer. It blazed in the night and made the other stars look pale beside it. God put it there when his baby son was born, to be like a spotlight, shining on him, lighting up the darkness, showing people the way to him. You see, God was like a new daddy. He couldn't keep the good news to himself. He'd been waiting all these long years for this moment, and now he wanted to tell everyone. So he pulled out all the stops. He'd sent an angel to tell Mary the good news. He'd put a special star in the sky to show where his baby boy was. And now he was going to send a big choir of angels to sing his happy song to the world. He's here. He's come. Go and see him, my little boy. Now where would you send your splendid choir? To a big concert hall, maybe? Or a palace, perhaps? God sent his to a little hillside outside a little town in the middle of the night. He sent all those angels to sing for a raggedy old bunch of shepherds watching their sheep outside Bethlehem. In those days, remember, people used to laugh at shepherds and say they were smelly and call them other rude names, which I can't possibly mention here. You see, people thought shepherds were nobodies, just scruffy old riffraff. But God must have thought shepherds were very important indeed because they're the ones he chose to tell the good news to first. That, n that night, some shepherds were out in the open fields, warming themselves by a campfire, when suddenly the sheep darted. They were frightened by something. The olive trees rustled. What was that? A wing beat? They turned around. Standing in front of them was a huge warrior of light, blazing in the darkness. Don't be afraid of me, the bright shining man said. I haven't come to hurt you, 
I've come to bring you happy news for everyone everywhere. Today, in David's town in Bethlehem, God's son has been born. You can go and see him. He is sleeping in a manger. Behind the angels, they saw a strange glowing cloud, except it wasn't a cloud. It was angels, troops and troops of angels armed with light. And they were singing a beautiful song. Glory to God. To God be fame and honor and all our hoorays. Then, as quickly as they appeared, the angels left. The shepherds stamped out their fire, left their sheep, raced down the grassy hill, through the gates of Bethlehem, down the narrow cobble streets, through a courtyard, down some steps, 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 past an inn, round a corner, through a hedge, until at last they reached a tumble-down stable. They caught their breath. They quietly tiptoed inside. They knelt on the dirt floor. They had heard about this promised child, and now he was here. Heaven's son, the maker of the stars. A baby sleeping in his mother's arms. This baby would be like the bright star shining in the sky that night. A light to light up the whole world, chasing away darkness, helping people to see. And the darker the night got, the brighter the star would shine. Okay, cool. Welcome back. The Bethlehem Shepherd's Clue got me thinking of some of my favorite Christmas songs. Like, Silent Night, It Came Upon a Midnight Clear, O Holy Night, and O Little Town of Bethlehem. It got me thinking of shepherds and sheep facing a throng of heavenly beings, lighting up the sky and praising God. It makes me wonder how the sheep reacted. <laughs> yeah, maybe the sheep took off. Scriptures only indicate that the shepherds hurried to Bethlehem to see what the angels was uh, to see what the angel was speaking about. But it must have been a challenge to get them rounded up and We're getting a little sidetracked here and a bit distracted. The shepherds actually went back to their flocks as recorded in verse 20. Oh yeah. Oh. Right. It's funny. Christmas is almost here and we want it to be perfect and special for our families and friends and yet we get distracted when God gave us all we need for Christmas to be perfect. On that note, what key theme came out of your investigation on the third clue, Bethlehem Shepherds? God loves us so much that he gave us a savior, and it's all in the report. Wonderful. Perfect. Let's start putting these clues on the board. Yeah, good idea. A savior for all of us. And all of us need saving. So we got, uh, clearly the shepherds in Bethlehem made a big part of this one. And Luke, everybody needs to remember Luke 2. It's an excellent verse with a lot of facts in it. This report is quite something. We're glad. Those poor shepherds, how startled they must have been. Yeah, no kidding. Imagine being born in a manger. Yeah. I wonder if the hay was soft or itchy. I don't know. Yeah, sometimes hay is a little bit, uh, causes you to itch a bit. Oh, you guys are making me itchy. Hopefully baby Jesus didn't have hay fever. Achoo! <laughs> so boss, what are you doing for Christmas? Are you uh, going anywhere? Nope, staying home with my little family. All right, guys, this looks great. I think you two have earned some time off. We right still on. have one more clue to examine before we give our client the final report, but that can wait until after Christmas. You guys both deserve a break. Thanks so much, boss. Yeah, thanks. Have a Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. That was such a great clue that they figured out today. 
wow, this case is getting stronger and stronger and stronger every day. Did you know that God loved us so much that he gave us a savior in the most unexpected place at the most unexpected time? God had shown his love. He'd sent his very own son, a baby, to rescue the whole world. He gave us what we needed most. He gave us the greatest gift in the history of the world. He gave us his son. If we believe and we put our faith in Jesus, we can have a relationship with God that will last forever. Let's take a moment and pray and thank God for his amazing gift. Dear God, thank you for loving each and every person here in this room. Thank you for loving each and every person at home and in the whole world, Lord. Thank you for loving us so much that you sent your son to be our savior. As we celebrate Christmas with our friends and our family, please help us to remember the true meaning of this special season. Thank you for Jesus. He really is the greatest gift the world has ever known. We love you and we pray these things in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Wow, Jesus is the best example of God's love for each and every one of us. God showed us how much he loves us by sending Jesus to rescue us all. Our bottom line today is that God loved us so much that he gave us a savior. So as you celebrate Christmas, take some time to think about how much God really loves you. He gave you the greatest gift ever, Jesus. Christmas always reminds me that I can trust God no matter what because he loves me and he sent Jesus for me. Our memory verse, Luke 2.11, reminds us what Christmas is all about. Let's say it together. Today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord, and you can find that in Luke 2.11. So just a reminder that we're gonna read with our families this week from Luke 2, one to seven, and this is how he loves us. And this talks about when Jesus was born. So our bottom line today is that God loved us so much he gave us a savior. Our memory verse, today in the town of David, a savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah. The Lord is in Luke 2.11. Our monthly theme this month has been celebrating Jesus, God's greatest gift. And of course, we always remember that we can trust God no matter what. It has been so exciting to listen to the case for Christmas today. You know what? You would have thought that might have been our final part. But it's not. Hmm. I think we're going to see all of our cast again next week. I wonder if they'd like to join me in wishing you all a Merry Christmas. I bet they would. Oh, they're coming from everywhere. Oh. <gasps> You look really familiar. I'll figure this out before the end of the month. I really will. All right. Do you want to join me in wishing all of our friends Merry Christmas? On the count of three. One, two, three. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.